Hello and welcome to the Managing Android Devices in Education video series. My name is Carlos Brito. I'm a program manager with the Intune for Education product group. This is module one, Android Device Management Overview. This video series will initially contain three modules. This first module provides an Android Device Management Overview. The second module will focus on personal device management options. And the third module will cover the device management options for corporate owned devices. Future sessions may cover additional Android management scenarios. Let's dive right into it. Microsoft Intune offers two distinct management approaches, mobile application management or MAM and mobile device management or MDM. With mobile application management, it's all about managing the applications to control and protect how corporate data is used and shared. We can secure applications as well as their content. For example, we can configure an application protection policy for the Outlook mobile application to prevent users from copying corporate data to applications that are not managed. You can also remove corporate or school data within mobile applications if needed. And the great news is that for applications that support both personal and corporate accounts, app protection policies will only apply to the corporate account on managed apps. While mobile application management is more commonly used with personal devices or BYOD, mobile device management is more commonly used for corporate or school-owned devices. With mobile device management, devices are enrolled into Intune and once they're enrolled, we can provision settings and applications. We have a high degree of control over these devices. For example, on a student device, we can push settings such as wallpaper or a browser with predefined favorites. We can also deploy automatically applications such as Microsoft 365 apps and Teams to help students get productive right away. Mobile device management can also capture software and hardware inventory details for enrolled devices. It can measure device compliance based on compliance policies that admins configure and define in Intune. As needed, it can also remove corporate or school data from these devices using remote actions such as retire or wipe. This may be needed if devices are lost or stolen. Mobile application management can be used in conjunction with conditional access policies to further restrict and control which apps can be used to access corporate resources. And when conditional access is used with mobile device management, it can restrict access to corporate resources only to managed and compliant devices. There are several management options for Android devices in Intune, ranging from least to most restrictive between personal and corporate owned devices. For personally owned devices, organizations can choose how corporate data can be accessed by enforcing application protection policies on apps that are used to access corporate data, rather than requiring full mobile device management. For example, it may require Outlook to be used for accessing emails and enforce a PIN when using Word for accessing corporate data and restrict copy and paste of corporate data from or to non-managed apps on the device. In contrast, some organizations may require devices to be enrolled into mobile device management in order to gain greater control over device compliance and to be able to deploy corporate apps, certificates, and enforce restrictions on personal devices. With the Android Enterprise personally owned with work profile option, there is clear separation between personal and corporate data on the device, and only the corporate portion of the device can be managed. Now let's move over to the corporate own management options for Android. It's starting with corporate own with work profile. This option allows for the entire device to be managed, but similar to the personally owned with work profile option, it provides clear separation between work and personal profiles on the device. This option is still in preview, so we'll not be covering this option further in this video series. The next option is the Android Enterprise Fully Managed User option, where unlike the previous option, everything is considered corporate. This is an option that's best suited for one-to-one -one scenarios where a named user is directly assigned to a specific device. Finally, the last option, which is the Android Enterprise Dedicated Device, 
is the most restriction option of all of the corporate owned device options. And it's most suited for single purpose devices or shared device scenarios where devices are locked down into a single app or a limited set of apps in a kiosk configuration. Just as with the fully managed option, this option allows complete management capabilities over the entire device. Unlike the personal device management options, all of the corporate owned options require a device reset to get started as devices can only be onboarded from the initial device setup experience. There's also no migration path between the various corporate owned management options without a device reset. Application protection policies can be used by itself or it can also be used in conjunction with any of the mobile device management options described here. Here's how you can get started with mobile application management. Even though devices are not getting enrolled into mobile device management, users still need to have Intune licenses assigned to them in order to be able to leverage application protection policies. As we talked about earlier, application protection policies do not impact personal accounts on applications that support both corporate and personal accounts. Applications must be enabled to support app protection policies either by leveraging our SDK or the Intune wrapping tool. Microsoft first party applications are natively enabled for app protection policies. Application protection policies must be created and targeted to user groups and target the applications intended to have them enforced. The company portal is required to be installed on Android devices to support app protection policies, but there's no need to launch or sign into the company portal app at all. It is also referred to as the broker app on Android devices because it enables app protection capabilities on those devices. One important note is that app protection policies are not supported on Android enterprise dedicated devices because those devices are expected to be userless. These are the steps for enabling mobile device management for Android devices in Intune. The first step is to configure a managed Google Play account. We recommend creating a new Gmail account and setting the backup email on this account to a group in your IT department. You may also want to consider enabling two-factor authentication for increased security while adding additional owners to maintain redundancy. It is important to note that managed Google accounts cannot be used in this step. You then need to verify the enrollment restriction settings in your tenant to ensure that work profile is enabled. And we also recommend disabling the legacy device administrator enrollment method to force new devices to be enrolled using Android Enterprise instead. For corporate owned device scenarios, you must also configure the respective enrollment profile settings in Intune. Finally, it is important to target policies that apply to each of the enrollment scenarios that you plan to support. For example, fully managed user devices versus dedicated devices. This will ensure that devices are able to successfully receive these settings. You must also ensure that you deploy managed Google Play apps to devices enrolled using Android Enterprise rather than the Android Store apps, which are only supported for devices enrolled with the legacy device administrator enrollment method. Let's put into practice the configuration steps required for enabling Android management in Intune. In this walkthrough, we'll review the enrollment restriction settings and we'll then link your managed Google Play account to Intune. And finally, we'll approve and sync managed Google Play apps that can be targeted to devices enrolled using Android Enterprise enrollment methods. We start our configuration process by going to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center portal. And our first step, we're gonna review the enrollment restriction settings for the tenant by going to devices, enroll devices, and we're gonna click on enrollment restrictions. Under device type restrictions, we're gonna select the default setting for all users. We click on properties and we will edit the platform settings. And what we wanna do is make sure that Android Enterprise Work Profile is allowed. And we'll then uh, recommend also to set the Android Device Administrator, which is a legacy enrollment for Android set to block so that new, no new devices are enrolled into Intune using 
uh, the legacy enrollment method. So we'll go ahead and say review and save. Make sure that the settings that we added are taken into account correctly and hit save. So now we have the enrollment restrictions set exactly the way we want them to be. The next step is to configure the manage Google Play account for Android Enterprise device enrollments. So for that, we're gonna go back to enroll devices. We're gonna click on Android enrollment, select manage Google Play. The first step, as you can see, uh, this there's no connected account for manage Google Play. We're gonna accept the permission to send both user and device permission to Google. And we'll launch Google to connect now, and it's gonna bring up a new window. And this is where I'm going to add the account that I created for uh, linking the Manage Google Play account into Intune. In my case, I'll enter the account that I created specifically for this. Next, uh, you can go ahead and just select get started. Uh, just put in your company name. Select next. There's no need to complete that information here, but you can if you'd like to. I have to accept and agree to the terms, I select confirm. And all I have to do now is say complete registration and this will complete the process of linking that account into Intune. As you can see, it transitioned to a setup state. And now uh, let's walk through the steps of adding applications from the Google Play uh, account into Intune and syncing them over so they can be used to be deployed to Android enterprise devices. So for that, we're going to go to apps, Android. We're going to go ahead and say add. Application type will be manage Google Play. We'll select. So now I am going to add accounts, uh, applications to this specific account that I have linked. So for example, let's choose Khan Academy. I'll select this specific application. I'll, I'll select approve. Uh, and I'll need to review all the different permissions that I'm going to be approving for this specific applications. And I'll say approve. And you'll be prompted if you want to keep getting asked as if permissions change for the application or if permissions change, you're gonna revoke uh, and the app and have to re-request that again. So we'll select to just keep approved when app requests new permissions and say done, which is the default behavior. So now we we'll simply can select the option to sync and this application should then get synced into Intune. Another way that you can force the sync to occur more rapidly is you can go to tenant administration, you can go to connectors and tokens, and under the Android, you have the manage Google Play, and you can also use this option to force another sync so that the apps can get synced uh, from the manage Google Play uh, into Intune. So we're gonna go ahead and go to apps now, I'll go to Android, and now, you can see that the Khan Academy app has been successfully added into Intune, and I can now successfully deploy uh, this app to all my Android enterprise and road devices. That's it. Here are the different ways that you can enroll Android devices into Intune using Android Enterprise. For personal devices enrolled using personally owned with work profile enrollment option, the company portal is really the only way to get those devices into mobile device management. Corporate owned device scenarios such as fully managed and dedicated devices can use NFC, near field communication, or token entry for Android devices with OS version 6.0 and above. 
QR code can be used on devices with Android version 7.0 and above. One of the key benefits to using NFC for provisioning large number of devices is that you can embed additional configurations such as Wi-Fi as part of the provisioning process so that you do not have to manually add Wi-Fi to each device being provisioned. It does require additional hardware, which is the NFC tag, which is required to accomplish the scenario. For token entry, it's important to note that different scenarios in Intune have different behaviors. For example, fully managed device scenarios, the token have no expiration, but dedicated device scenarios, the token have a 90-day expiration, which can be extended. For QR code, as soon as the device is reset, the first screen that you reach to, you can just tap the screen six times. For devices with Android version 7 and 8, the QR code app will be downloaded, but for devices with 9.0, and above OS version, the QR code is automatically embedded on the operating system. You can also progress to the device configuration process. And when you get to the point where you're asked for a Google account, you can enter AFW pound setup, and that will trigger the flow where the QR code app is downloaded, similar to the flow for devices with Android 7.0 when using the QR code method. Now let's go into the persistent device enrollment options. With Knox Mobile Enrollment for devices with Android version 6.0 and above, this is with Android devices with Samsung Knox 2.8 or higher devices only. And for non-Samsung devices, we have the zero touch option for devices with 8.0 and above on participating manufacturers. This option is similar to the iOS option for automated device enrollment or the Windows option for autopilot devices. Every time a device is reset, the device is pushed back into an automated enrollment flow. So the devices maintain the MDM enrollment uh, no matter uh, how many times they are reset. This is the end of module one, Android device management overview. In the next module, we'll take a closer look at management options for personal devices.